Good morning. So today we're going to be following the Sidewinder low-level training route used by the US Air Force. And we're going to do this from Edwards Air Force Base in the F-104 Starfighter. So you can see I've put the tip tanks on the Starfighter and filled them up with fuel so we can use the afterburner along the way and get around the route in you know, quite quick fashion. So let's see how we get on. Before we get started, um, some people kindly have sent me a link to the low level route that's publicly available so you can see the URL there. I'll try to remember to put a link to this in the notes of the video. So this is a briefing as you can see from March 2016. The interesting thing is this has got the route that somebody sent me in the middle of it showing the the map that I've put into Little Nav Map and into Navigraph showing our route around the um, the Sidewinder low level route and it's got the Jedi transition marked in as well so this has been known about since 2016 at least um, but it's got lots of other information like um, you know um, noise abatement areas and separations and guidance as to where to go into and out of the the, the route and where the tankers are on the route and all that kind of thing so that's fascinating if you want to go and have a read of it like I said I'll put a note in the or a link sorry in the notes of the video Okay, so let's go and get inside our Starfighter, and we've done the fuel. We'll call for the external power unit, so that should be now connected to the aeroplane. We'll turn the EPU on, so the Starfighter doesn't have batteries to start its own systems up. It requires external power every time. So once we've got that connected, we can go and start the engines. There seems to be a small bug at the moment where the switches don't flick. But that may be related to my Airbus stick, I'm not sure. Okay, so we'll leave that running. And we'll just get rid of that for the moment, the tablet. So we'll close the canopy while we're here. And we'll close, whoops, we'll close the duct outside of the aircraft. There's a fresh air duct. We'll go and turn on the pressure suit, turn on the oxygen supply within the cockpit. And we should have had the beacon light on already, actually. We're going to do that <laughs> a bit late. And we'll put on some interior lights so we can see inside the cockpit while we're flying along. It might be a bit dull with the... Um, the low sun in the sky so that might be helpful to us cockpit temperature we'll go and put the pitot heats on we'll do the put some heat on our flying suit we'll put the rest of the systems on auto uh, initial navigation we put the standby for a few seconds we wait for it to warm up and then after a few seconds we switch it to align the align light will start flashing when it's ready to go because at the moment you can see the attitude indicator is out so we wait for it to flash there it goes then we can turn it to nav and that will correct the attitude indicator which it has done we can also go to the directional gyro and switch it to tekan and i'm just thinking what else we need to do around the cockpit. We need to crack open the throttle a little bit to get it out of the shut-off detent. Should have done that first, but it shows it's not really simulated that accurately. And we can go and put the radio to TR plus G. I think we're pretty good to go after that. So we can do heading hold on the auto, but we're not going to use autopilot to be honest so we have no need to really play with that obviously no systems no weapon systems are really modeled on the aircraft so we don't need to worry about those either calibrate the altimeter we're not using the radar it requires an external application for the radar to run we'll close the mirrors we're not going to need them okay so take off the parking brake Open the throttles very gently. Try not to roast the grain crew as we pull away. Let's 
got the head tracking on. So this is the freeware version of Edwards I showed the other day. This, you can see there's a Galaxy parked over there. There's C-17s all over the place. There's a C-17 just alongside us here, look. And there's various other aircraft around the complex. There's some F-15s, just... Yeah, you can't easily see them from here. A lot of the fighters are right down the other end. There's a B-2 parked up in the hangar over here. And another C-17 by the look of it. I think behind the B-2 there's a B-1. B1B. There's another C-17 around the back of here. There's a lot of aeroplanes around. There's another one. Or oh, maybe that's the one we saw through the gap in the hangar where the B2 was. There's a, an Osprey, is that? A V22. So it probably appears I'm taxiing quite fast. I am, because this is a huge base, otherwise it would take us 10 minutes just to get to the runway. It's a nice looking aeroplane, isn't it? Obviously I've got the kind of 1960s livery here when it was in the test squadron. Just coming up to the runway. So we'll extend the flaps to full. And I believe our first heading of the day to fly over towards Isabella Lake, which is the entry into the Sidewinder low level, is about 315 degrees from. Edwards. We'll have a look in a moment. After burn is on, you can see the airspeed increasing there, coming up to 100 knots. We've got tip tanks on, so we're heavy as well, remember. So I doubt we'll get off the ground much before 200 knots. Stay off of the cat eyes if we can. So just begin rotation. A bit of a bounce. And we're up. So gear up. And the flaps can start to be retreated as we climb and come through 250 knots. So flaps up. Let's have a look at this from outside. Look at the shock diamonds. Okay, let's come off the blower for a moment and level out. Stay below the cloud ceiling if we can. Just watching the vertical speed there. So let's go and double check our route. So, so we want, uh, we're going to need much more than 315, so 335 shall we say, to get back onto our route because we've extended slightly on the takeoff there. So just watching the directional gyro here. Doing about 450 knots. Coming around to 330 degrees. Okay. 
let's trim it slightly. I'm feeding in quite a bit of back pressure to keep the nose up. And I'd like the aeroplane to fly itself if it can. Obviously we could use autopilot, but where's the fun in that? Okay, while well, we're flying along then, let's have a little look. Look how thin the wings are. So we're making our way over towards um, the now the entrance into the the route is the centre of the West Dam on the southwest corner of Isabella Lake, and then obviously we follow about 350 degrees up towards the Needles, which is a a very visual reference point. And then from there we go to a washed out bridge on the edge of Owens Lake. So if you wanted to do this without a map, it is easily possible, but you obviously just need to learn the visual reference points. So we're going out towards Isabella Lake, which is alongside Kern Valley, which we've flown at with GA aircraft in the past. Whoa, look at all the windmills. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. So there's a noise abatement area that's covered in that PDF I showed you a link of. Um, there is a noise abatement area over Kernville. So that's why our route doesn't take us through the lower of the valley. We have to stay in the hills alongside. So I imagine if you go and buzz the town, then the, the base will get an angry phone call. Are we, are we crossing our over yet? No, we're just actually we're edging left. That's the crosswind is doing that. Look, there's a wind from the northeast at 20 knots that's slowly pushing us back onto the route. That's a lot of windmills. Okay, so we're about 450 something knots. So if you remember from the video I did the other day, the stealth fighter, or certainly the simulated stealth fighter we had, came out at a similar kind of speed, to be honest, but then it's got two engines, it's only got one, and we're not using afterburning at the moment. We're running about 95% RPM. So we continue across the next two patches of high ground and then we should see Isabella Lake. It's a lovely morning. I've left the, um, the live weather on because obviously it just gives you something else to deal with which keeps it interesting. So we need to climb a little bit, which obviously we can do very easily in a Starfighter. We can transfer a little bit of our airspeed for altitude or exchange, I should say. I mean, obviously in a Starfighter we could open the afterburner and climb at probably 40 or 50 degrees until we get to 40,000 feet without too much trouble. But we'd also empty half of our fuel tank in doing so. So what is the fuel quantity saying? That's interesting. Ah, so we need to put this onto tips for it to sh reflect what we've actually got. That's good. Now, do we actually have to choose? Let's just make sure we don't slam into a mountainside while we're looking around. Fuel. Let's go for the tip tanks then. So presumably that will burn the fuel from the tip tanks rather than the primary fuel tank. So we're just coming up on Lake Isabella. Yeah, you can see the corner of the lake down here and the dam on the left side. So let's swirl around a little bit so to make sure we come over it at the angle we need to exit at. Well, heading I should say, not angle. So we're looking to cross 
at 350 degrees or thereabouts. Which will take us out over the hills, not over the valley. Okay, so here we go. The Sidewinder low level we're about to enter in the F-104 Starfighter. So, we're, yeah, we're going a little bit east of where we should be. So let's just correct that. Okay, over the middle of the dam. continue on straight up the, the map basically. So we continue on until we get to the needles, so we'll climb over the top of this hill. Again, we're not allowed down there because of uh, noise abatement rules. And there are lots of them around the ranges, so you need to be mindful. Should we roll over and have a look at the top of this hill as we go past? <laughs> Whoa! Starfighter has some pretty impressive roll rate, doesn't it? So I think that's the needles we can see out here. This will be it here. It hasn't drawn it in yet. So we can just continue in low. Just picking and choosing our route. So Kernville's down here. So that's where we have to stay away from. You probably get pretty sick and fed up of aeroplanes ripping through overhead. Yep, there we go, it's just rendered in the needles. It's a custom 3D object, obviously. So how are we doing on flow rate? We're looking good, actually. 7,000... How was that? Pounds per hour. Which isn't bad for a Starfighter, especially running at 95% RPM. I mean, obviously we could open this up. If we do so, watch the indicated airspeed. So that's Mach 0.8 we've just gone through. Point nine. It may not go supersonic at low level too easily. It depends on the loadout. We've got the tip tanks, remember. It's edging that way though. Look, it's getting up towards Mech 1. You can see the beginning of the gauge there. It's probably not going to quite make it. It's not quite clean enough to do it, probably. And it's arguable in the simulator if it's accurate or not in that regard. Okay, so as we cross past the needles, we turn right to 40 degrees and head out towards the valley. So, to the valley floor, I should say. So, 40 degrees. So watching the directional gyro. mindful of fuel the whole time. Probably a bit paranoid about it to be honest, but we'll see. Now why are the needles deviating? Do we have to switch between left and right tip tanks? Or does it do it itself? We'll find out along the way I guess. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, is this rendering snow? 
it shouldn't really be. Or is it just very white chalky hilltops? I think it might be rendering snow, you know. Maybe it is snowy up there at the moment. Or maybe it's a, an aberration from Flight Simulator. Which it sometimes does. So let's have a quick look at the route before we get there. So this is where there should be a washed out bridge on the edge of uh, Owens Lake, yes. So let's make sure we don't go and wrap this around the scenery, which would happen very quickly in a starfight. <laughs> So across the next ridge, I imagine we drop into the lake bed. So I'm just swinging out. I'm staying a little bit to the right on purpose. Although, saying that, we get a ridge to cover here. Obviously, if we went left or right of it, we wouldn't have to do it. But it means we can turn and see the visual reference point in front of us rather than missing it direct you know completely underneath the aircraft so i guess it might have made more sense to dip through that gap but we'll see Okay, so Owens Lake, as far as I'm aware, has dried up a lot since the map was drawn. So there's not much of it left. There's little bits and, you know, corners of it. So I think down here is where the washed out bridge is. Or maybe this side. Or here even. So we basically follow the valley floor up. Let's just have a look outside. So we're looking for 335 degrees on the way up here, which takes us actually directly over the outcrop, so you could use that as a reference point. I think I've got a reference point actually missing off my map the numbers don't add up. Let's go and have, refer to the real one for a moment. Um, here it is. Yeah, so I've got a reference point missing by the look of it at the Wash Road intersection. So I should probably be heading over this way. Starfighter really doesn't like pulling much elevator, does it? So let's have a look at that on the map as we're doing it. So it'd be over here somewhere I should have been aiming for. Which keeps you clear of Lone Pine, I guess, for noise reasons again. So if we were to do that on our map and add a position, that's the route we should really have been going. Just to keep us clear away from the settlement. So we don't go again, so we don't cause problems for people with noise. I damaged the Starfighter. I've got a caution showing up. I think I've damaged it. Is there a way of fixing it while we're in midair? Ground speed error readout 420. Interesting. not sure there's any way of fixing it, which may mean we have trouble with the aircraft from now on, to be honest. This feels a little bit broken. You can see that happening. So bear with me a second. I'm just going to go and look something up. 
Okay, so I've had a, an adventurous couple of minutes trying to repair the aeroplane, and I've just about done that. So I had to actually go and respawn right from the main menu, because the aeroplane had somehow broken itself. Now I noticed there are some warnings on down here about the, the trim positions. But I don't believe they have anything to do with the aircraft. If we have a look outside... Everything looks fine. Now we had got a warning had come on. Now this aeroplane does simulate failures. But um, over the time I was trying to repair the <coughs> the problem, or get to the bottom of it, we lost more and more function of the elevators. So it may have been a hydraulic failure that we had. I just didn't diagnose it. But this is showing a problem with the aileron and and rudder trim which is interesting anyway we carry on up to um, the next waypoint which is the edge of the dam so if we get a little bit of height along here Open the burners up. I think we've earned it. I do know in the Starfighter you do have to be very careful with inputs. It may have even been a USB control glitch overstressed the controls, so it may have thrown either the elevators or the, the rudder to full throw at high speed and damaged them. But it could have just been a random failure. Okay, so we're looking for the edge of this lake, which is a dam. If we look at the map, we are going to turn to 60 degrees when we get to it and then fly across into the wash area in the next valley. So we're just about to pass over this if we look from outside. So there's the dam. Then we turn to 60 degrees, so do it gently. I'm now terrified of damaging the aeroplane. So we're looking at the direction of gyro there to bring it around to 60 degrees. We'll climb over the hills. So should we climb up, give us some power? Or 50 knots, so it's accelerating as it's climbing. Look, so there's 60 degrees. Come back off the afterburner. Okay. So we're just clearing our way across these hills and then we go into the centre of the valley and then turn 133 degrees. So looking at the visual reference points here, we're looking for yeah, just the centre of the knoll, it calls this. So we'll see how we get on. Let's make sure we don't go and plough into the landscape eh? Starfighter's good at that.
Okay, should we get some speed on as we come through here? Get back towards Edwards. Because this route basically takes us back down past China Lake. It's basically a flat, low-level route, so this is where... This is this is the part of the route, just past these headlands, the knoll over here, as it calls it, is where the F-117s have been spotted over the years. We still got the lights on, it's bizarre. I'll have to have a read of the book about that. doing on fuel? That's a good point actually. I probably haven't gone to tip tanks, have I? It's looking for pylon. Oh no, it's just the, the rendering of the switch. So I've been busy burning my main fuel supply down. This has to go back to tip, doesn't it? So we've got full tips by the look of it, so we may as well just go for it. Burn it all the way home. So we have to be careful about overstressing any of the controls, so we're going to have to fly very, very smoothly. So as we come over the knoll, we want to be turning to 197 degrees. So just keep this gentle turn going. And then we're looking for the edge of the lava field is our next turning point. Which is basically just means stay in the flat of the valley. I'm going to come back off the burner. I don't. We've, got, we've gone beyond Mach 1, by the way. We've broken the sand barrier on the way down here. We're just dipping back, back below Mach 1. So in that bit of descent over the top of there, we very smoothly went through the sand barrier, which was quite cool. Bringing it back down. So there's the edge of, this is the lava field, look, if you look below us, you can see the patterns in the, the ground. So as you get to the edge of this, we turn left along the next valley. So this will go past Star Wars Canyon, so let's move the map. So we're going to 134 degrees. And then we fly straight across the top of here, and this will take us onto Panamint Springs, which is where Star Wars Canyon is. So we fly straight across this, um, a, what would you call it, a bluff, an outcrop, a ridge. I'm not an expert on geographical terminology, so you'll forgive me for that one. Let's open the burners up again, we've got plenty of fuel very conservative so far. In fact we need to get rid of some of it, if anything.
Springs. So our next turn is at Panamint Springs, which is the essentially where the um No, is that how we broke it last time? I'm just wondering what kicked the nose up then. So I'm gonna let the nose just fall without using the elevators. So pull it back down to four hundred knots. We look out to the right of us. So there's the the rocks you use sometimes as a reference point. Is it that one? Let's have a quick look. No. It's the next one. So these rocks surrounded by the, the mud flats here are used as the visual reference point. If you look over to the right, you'll see two entrances. The one to the right here, is that it? I think that's it, isn't it? That's the way into the Star Wars Canyon, but they fly from west to east. So our next point is to fly basically 170 degrees straight down the valley, straight over Sills Lake. So we'll, should we do this at altitude for a change so we actually get to see some of the layout? Let's go and climb. So there's Sells Lake, so the, the basic route takes you, straight lines it down to there, and then back off to Edwards in our case. So if we look back along the route we've just followed, we came in down here, and then crossed through. So earlier on we were flying down that side, level it out. So we're about 18,000, 17 and a half thousand feet. You get a bit better view from up here, don't you? So this is Sells Lake we're just approaching. Pretty much on track. And then fly back in towards Edwards. So we'll go flat out all the way home. So should we climb again? Let's take it up into the thin air and get some proper speed on. OK, 
Okay, going to turn right to 40 degrees in a few moments. Could actually begin the turn there, couldn't we? So we're just coming up to 26,000 feet. 27,000 feet. 28,000 feet. 29,000 feet. And 30,000 feet. So let's just let the nose drop. We'll hold it there at 30,000 feet. That takes us out to our next waypoint. Coming back down to 29,000. Trying to trim the aeroplane out to, to fly level. There we go. So there's China Lake, down below us, but we're carrying on to Edwards, which is probably too far ahead to see at the moment. Now, at the moment, we're doing just subsonic. If we put this into a gentle dive and go supersonic, we'll then get a shockwave former in the aeroplane and we'll accelerate. So just going beyond Mach 1 now, so if we level ourselves out again. You can see we're coming up through Mach 1.2 now. So we're about 24,000 feet. Mach 1.4 coming up. I'm trying to trim it for level flight, but it's dodging around a fair amount. And obviously, at these speeds, even the tiniest amount out means thousands of feet a minute. I'm just twitching the the trim. You can see it twitching the aeroplane. So Mach 1.6 is just coming up. We are shifting. Mach 1.8 is coming up. So I'm just doing a very, very slow turn out to the east of Edwards so we can line up for approach. Ideally, yeah, we want to, you can see there's some outcrops out here, we want to be head heading for them. Oh, hello, the game servers are unavailable, so we'll cut the throttle back. Notice we were getting a slow warning, that's warning really about temperatures. So there's Edwards. So we could cut right back to idle and put the spoilers in. We're still supersonic at the moment, but we won't be for long. Look at the speed fall off. So we'll go for the shorter runway, we don't need the massive runway. Okay, flaps are at their first stage at 250 knots, that's fine. Feeding the throttle back in to maintain airspeed. So 
So you gear down. Full flaps. Whoa, we just dropped a wing. Didn't have enough throttle. You need throttle in the Starfighter. It uses blown flaps. Yeah, we're happy now, look. So you absolutely need thrust because the thrust blows air over the flaps and keeps you um, stable. Not the smoothest landing ever, but we got down. I should have um, kept us a stable speed until we were just above the runway and then cut the throttle and let it collapse onto the runway. But it loses, this version of the Starfighter isn't that great in terms of flight modeling. It tends to be either in brick mode or not a brick mode. <laughs> but you can play with that and obviously learn it. We were quite heavy, which didn't help. Okay, so we'll taxi off the runway. That was good fun. Apart from the random failure where we lost elevator control. So should we open the... How fast are we going? Should we open the canopy on the way in? So what's parked down this end of the base that we didn't get to see before? There's a B-1B over there. There's several F-35... Oh no, the F-22s. Or 35s. Was it but I think it's both. So there's the Galaxy we were parked behind this morning. This B-52. C-17. Okay, let's just slow down. Eek! Go and park with the fighter jets, shall we? It's a B1B Lancer. Or Bone, as its nickname is. B1. Yeah, there's some F-22s here, look. Very cool. Should we go in behind and park in between them? F-35, some F-15s. Very cool. Should we go in between these two F-22s then? Okay, parking brake on. I'm 
not entirely sure how you shut the engines down on, <laughs> on this thing. Presumably we can just cut the fuel, which would be done over here, and that would kill it on the spot. There we go. So there's a few generalizations in the cockpit, but it's pretty good. Obviously that F-22 is getting ready to go, although there's no pilot in it, it's making noise. There we go. Oh, our canopy is shutting apparently. Right, I'm going to leave it there, I hope you enjoyed that. Not the best landing, and some strangeness with the plane breaking itself halfway through the route, but can't have everything, I guess. Hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon.